Yo, what's cracking guys? It's your boy Crystal Online back at you guys with another video and today we're going to be going over how to use movement. Now, I wanted to make this video because utilizing good movement can help take your striking game to the next level. Um, it's it's very very simple but yet kind of tricky. So, we're going to be going over three ways that I personally use movement to help uh, set up strikes in the striking game. So the first way that or the first thing that we're going to be going over is how to use movement to mix up combination timing. Now this can be very important if uh, if you're just trying to throw your opponent off your rhythms. Now when you get up to the elite level, elite level guys are just trying to get your timing. They're trying to see what you're going to throw. So you're going to want to use movement to be able to mix up your combination timing. And what I mean by that is uh, you you maybe just throw two strikes. You step out. You come back in. Throw one two come back in throw three strikes and just being able to mix up your combination timing to keep your opponent just on edge sometimes will give you just that little bit of advantage that you need uh, you see me do this to a lot of people on ranked um, I'll, I'll throw a jab I'll back out come in throw a double jab back out come in throw a jab and then I plant and I throw a four piece combination now why I do that is because I'm gauging to see what my opponent does when I do it so if I jab if I jab and then move out and I see them try to catch me with a combination, whether that be a one-two or a jab hook or something like that, I know that they're going to respond every single time I hit them with a strike. So then I'll start setting it up and mixing up my combination timing by going one, and then I see them start to come out. So then I throw a straight lead hook that kind of stops them, does some solid damage, or what I'll do is I'll jab, and if they block... If I jab them and I just see that they block and they don't respond with a combination, then I'll just jab, I'll come back, and I'll throw a 1-2, and it, then you get into block breaking, and it kind of starts to put a little bit of pressure on them. So that's how I personally use movement to set up my, my combination timing. It's just simple. Just throw maybe one strike, come back, hop back in, and you're just moving in and out, gauging to see what your opponent is going to do, and then you can make reads off of that. So the second thing that I wanted to cover in this video is using movement to bait out combinations to counter. Now you see me use this a lot as well. Um, it, I use it primarily to bait out leg kicks, right? So you'll see me playing from uh, playing out here, utilizing movement. If I see that my opponent is going to leg kick, I'll play at this distance right here and bounce in and out of uh, leg kicking range. And then the second day leg kick, I back out real quick. And then I come back in with an overhand. That's that's what I mean by baiting out combinations. Because people, a lot of people love to just throw the jab leg kick. They'll throw the jab leg kick. So after the jab, if you're able to make that read correctly, after the jab comes out, you know that the leg kick is going to come out. So you want to stay at this distance. And then you overhand it in the vulnerability spot for the leg kicks. So you can use it that way. As well as you could, uh, you could use it if you are pocket fighting. So you see me utilize this a lot as well. Uh, I'll be in the pocket, you know, throwing four-piece combinations, getting my opponent primed and ready to set up a counter. Um, so I'll just be in the pocket, right, throwing three-punch combinations, and then I'll, all of a sudden I'll just back out, and my opponent will try to move forward and reach a, reach for a combination because they see me move, and then I just pop out a front kick. So those are ways that I personally utilize movement to bait out combinations because if you get your opponent used to you doing something and then you just use movement to just maybe create a little bit of space sometimes you can catch them with front kicks or even you could catch them with overhands off of miss kicks or even uh if your opponent is just reacting to you utilizing the last step that we talked about which was uh trying to mix up your combination timing if you come in you throw a one two and then they try to chase you back here not only are they draining their stamina, they're not allowing their block to go back up. So then you can just step back in and hit them with a good three piece and their block is broken. And then you're going to do massive damage, not only because their block is broken, but also because they utilize stamina from trying to hit you. So movement can be very, very beneficial to baiting things out, uh, baiting out combinations as well as baiting out big strikes for you to be able to punish. So the last thing that we're going to be going over and the third thing, the third and last thing, I'm sorry, that we're going to be going over is how to use movement to pressure. And we're going to go ahead and restart practice here because I don't want to knock out Hen and Burrell if I throw any strikes. 
But you can utilize movement to create pressure, really. And that's just by moving forward. Like, I, I feel like block breaking is a very, very big thing in the game. But I honestly, I don't use a lot of block breaking um, to pressure my opponents. I really just stay in their face. If you go back and you rewatch a lot of my fights where I'm able to, to break my opponents with pressuring, I'm just staying in their face. It's not because I'm just... I'm just coming in and throwing a crap ton of strikes on their block. I'm really just staying in their face. A lot of people don't like to be smothered. They don't like to be in pocket fighting scenarios. They like to be out at range where they can hit you with front kicks. They can step in. They can get in their rhythm. So when you when you smother their punches, a lot of people tend to get nervous and they're not as confident in their game um, as they normally are. So in order to use movement to create this pressure... You just want to be moving outside of distance like this. So you come in one, two, you step out, and then you step right back in. Uh, this is something that I talked about in my pressure video a little bit, but I wanted to cover in the movement video, is uh, just utilizing this right here, this range right here, to create pressure. Throw a one, two, circle back out right here, and it just feels like the pressure is nonstop. Um, if somebody's not used to fighting against somebody that plays this way, they're gonna they're gonna get real nervous and then they start to make uh, they start to make mistakes and then that's when you're able to capitalize because now you're playing right here where just a simple one two can hit them if they if they respond wrong so definitely try to use movement to create pressure if you're a pressure fighter um, can be very very important uh, and I I use this a lot uh, I use this in the ESFL tournament um, a lot. To be honest, and I use, even use this against guys like Ed Parker. If you go back and rewatch um, the video that I just made of my two fights against Ed Parker, I really didn't want to give him any space. So I used movement to create pressure, and I was able to get him back up against the cage where if he made one mistake and I rocked him, uh, it was potentially the fight. So this works against high, high level players as well, as well as intermediate to beginner players. So this is definitely something that if you're not using it in your striking game that you want to use. But all right, guys, those are the three things that I wanted to touch on in the video on how to use movement to better your striking game. Hopefully these tips helped you guys out. Let me know in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys want to see more videos like this. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I make tutorial videos as well as I make comp videos and all kinds of different videos for UFC 4. But until the next video, guys, thank you guys for stopping by, and I will see you guys later on.